Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. I'm Andy. That's Jim. We're going to break down UFC Fight Night. Kyle Brawlow versus Jerry Cannonier as your main event. No time to waste. Let's get into it. While you're watching, if you could, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. What's up, Kong Wang and Victoria Leonardo? Um, I kind of feel bad for Victoria Leonardo, Jim. <laughs> Starting off And rightfully here. so. I mean, this poor woman... In her, she gets Man and Furo in her first fight. Then Melissa Gatto. She gets at least she gets Mandy Bohm, and then they give her Natalia Silva to just get absolutely brutalized. Um, this, uh, this, this, I just, I, I don't know if I've seen someone get fed to the wolves quite like this. And now they bring in Kong Wang, who they expect to be uh, around the promotion for for a little bit of time. So, uh, what's your take on this fight? It's a woman's fight. So most of the time we're chasing unders and uh, plus money's on that side. And we don't have any totals yet. We don't have any buy finish props yet. But if there was ever a fighter that is going to lend herself to get finished, it is Victoria Leonardo. I'm not bashing her, but she has these moments in her, her fights where you just know it's it. She knows it's it's over. <laughs> and she has this look that comes on her face and she gets finished. Um yeah, I just okay. think that this is. I know Kong is not high volume. Uh, everybody's going to talk about the Shipchenko thing. I get it. It's kickboxing, different sport. <laughs> we saw Super Pereira and Adesanya, different sport. Um, but I think at some point she's going to get hit with some pretty hard shots and possibly look for the door here. So the money line on Kong Wang is absolutely absurd for a debuting fighter. But in this instance, it's Victoria Leonardo. I know she's had great competition. Well, she could win this if she makes it dirty and gets the grappling going. I just don't know if she's going to be able to not accrue damage that's going to stop her from doing that. So uh, I think at some point we see a finish in this fight, probably late round two or round three when the damage just piles up for Victoria. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, this can't. you can't even put this in a parlay. I mean, it's, it's just kind of a pass from a betting mm -hmm. perspective, so... Josiane Nunez, Josiane Nunez and Jacqueline Calvacante. Who do you like in this one? Well, we, we kind of like Josiane Nunez and we expected the improvements in her last fight. And I'm sorry, but we just didn't see it. No. We didn't see it at all. Um, now, could we have been duped? Was it an off night? I don't know, but she looked uh, the same, if not worse. Uh, not a great level of competition. Uh, just the the win over Ramona Pasquale is is pretty good, but Bayo Malecki, Zara Farron, losing to Chelsea Chandler is a bad look. Um, so I would have to lean Cavalcante. I I really don't have any interest in betting this fight, to be honest with you. Uh, I think there's better spots. I think this card is going to be very tricky. I, I there's a lot of landmines here that I want to try to avoid this week and come out of this with another win and keep that streak going. So no bet for me. I would lean Cavalcante because of the size. I think she'll have good enough footwork to not get caught by the big shots of Nunez. I actually think Nunez is a live dog here. Um, they both have fought uh, the same person, Zara Farron, who is absolutely terrible. She's mm -hmm. gigantic for the weight class, and she just she, – it's like she's almost too big. Yep. Like she's kind of clumsy and, and can't really punch very well. So they've both beaten her. But I got to tell you, when I watch Calvacane, I'm just, I'm not that impressed with the striking that I think it's going to scare Nunez. And one thing we do know about Nunez is she will eat punches to try and deliver them. She's mm -hmm. going to walk through punches. May work, may not work, but she's, she's going to push the issue. She's going to throw that big overhand. Um, you know, Chelsea Chandler just used her size and muscled her around. That's what Chelsea Chandler is. I call her, the, you know, the bull in the china shop. So, you know, Nunez beats – I mean, uh, listen, uh, Malecki, Pasquale, and Farron, it's about as bad as you can get. It's the opposite of Victoria Leonardo. Leonardo's yeah. like, are you serious? <laughs> like, <laughs> I get – Can I have that record? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I get those fights, please? Um, I think – so I think Nunez is going to be able to walk through uh, some of Calvacanti's strikes and i think if you're looking for underdogs i think you could you know do i, I don't think you could do I, look at some of these people that she's fought all right zara fair and terrible croden all right four and one but then a one and oh a six and eight mm -hmm. 
an, uh, you know, Nora Cornell. And um, so it's not like Calvin County has been lighting the world on fire here. So I think it's a pretty much a coin toss fight. If you got a coin toss fight and one fighter is kind of a big underdog, that, no way I'm laying the, the bunny line in Calvin County. No way I'm putting it in a parlay. So I think it's Nunez. I think Nunez can do some damage to her. And I, I, I think this might this might be it for for Nunez if she has a chance to move forward in the UFC because she really her her lack of size really got exposed, yeah. uh, you know and it, you know listen Chelsea uh, Chelsea Chandler's not you know a great UFC fighter but she is a UFC fighter that you know is going to take fights and she's going to be tough and you know Nunez's lack of size really got um, really got exposed there and I don't think Kawakani is going to be able to do the same thing so on a very weird card. With like you said, landmines all over the place. I'm, I think I think Nunez is is kind of maybe a spot. Um, I have not bet this with my own money, so I can't say it's an official play. But um, it's certainly not going to be Calvacanti for me. Jose Medina and Zach Reese here, two veterans of the Contender Series. Uh, this Jose Medina thing has got to be one of the most confusing contracts I've ever seen Dana White uh, give on Contender Series. Uh, Zach Reese is a big favorite. How are you playing this one? Two big questions in this fight, one on each side. Is Zach Reese a fraud? Which I don't think he is. And what is Medina going to look like at this weight class? New weight class for him. Carries a lot of extra weight beforehand. We just saw this. Who was our guy that moved weight that we thought looked fantastic two weeks ago? There's, there's, the fight, but. there's some guys that just look much better. And Dane even said it when he gave him the contract. He's like, you're fighting at the wrong weight class. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a it's a perplexing situation. I think Zach Reese wins. Uh, let's face it, Zach Reese's finish, getting finished his last fight does not happen very often. Let's just say that. That's right up there a little bit better than the, the up kick to the liver. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, um, uh, yeah that was a nice chase on. Yeah, that was the night we saw two submission slam KOs. I mean, oh yeah, there, the there was that, yeah, right? there was like two of them. Yeah, Brundage uh-huh. got one, and then uh, yeah. it, th- there was there was another one. So mm-hmm. yeah, he loses to Brundage when he he should have let go of the triangle. He didn't. Brundage slams. It was a one in a. I'm sorry, it was a one in a ten thousand chance that something like that happens. And then he comes and he just destroys Julian Marquez. He, he does what he's supposed to do in that fight. You know, yeah. that, that's what he's supposed to do. So uh, the big question is Medina's, uh, you know, weight move. Uh, I don't think he's UFC caliber, though. So weight move or not, I'm still going to lean Zach Reese on this. You know, um, I think they're feeding him this fight on purpose, and they need to get him on a bit of a streak. You know, UFC needs marketable fighters, and the one thing that Zach Reese is is he is exciting, and he's marketable. He's huge for the weight class. Length is going to be a real problem for Medina. Zach just has to be smart. (laughs) <laughs> That's what we're looking for is fight IQ from Zachary's. I actually went back and I was like, I was like, I remembered in the moment we were all just like, we couldn't believe that Jose Medina got a contract. So I went back and I was like, let me see if I can just see what Dana saw. I can't see one redeeming quality out of a UFC fighter that, Ho- that Jose Medina, like Magomed Gadziel Suloff is not good. He's just not mm-hmm. that good. And you know, we talked about him about like, you know, being an older guy, finally getting a shot and he puts on a terrible performance. Um, on cont- even though he's nine and oh, I know I'm ripping a nine and oh, but how it's do you an ugly, go- it's an ugly nine and no, it's an ugly nine. Yeah. How do you go to decision against Brinson Ribeiro? How is yeah. that possible? Um, so Medina is, he's literally getting credited for getting his ass kicked. <laughs> I mean, he got it. He got his ass. Uh, oh, I see something in him. I didn't tell the other matchmakers that I'm going to do this. When he gave him that contract, they, their eyes must have been the size of dinner plates. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? So yeah, Dana says you got to lose some weight. So I, I don't know, man. Is losing a bunch of weight great for him or not great for him? Look, find like, out. Well, yeah. Well, if he doesn't have any power, then you know he's not going to scare Reese. And so Reese, I think I added it up. I think it. It is eight fights. I think it's less than 12 minutes of total cage time. Yeah, he just, everything goes, uh, you know, finishes early. Um, Medina was really tough, but I, I don't know. Is Magomed really scaring you with the power? Maybe Medina's just fought a bunch of cans, and he has. Look at look at what happened before he made it on a contender series. He goes 
split decision against a four and two fighter in Thunder Fight Forty Two. Beats a guy that's 11 and 23, 2 and 0, 2 and 1, 0 and 2, 0 and 0. This guy's fought absolutely nobody's, and somehow, yet here he is yeah. on a UFC fight night. I it, like the question about Reese is that, oh, we haven't seen him in, uh, you know, without cardio. I don't know. Could he gas out? Yeah, he could. I don't know if he's going to need it. I think this smells like another round one finish because mm-hmm. Medina is just awful. And Reese is, I, I'm with you. I think Reese is. Um, the real deal, and you're and you're right. They love these guys with fast finishes, and what a great way to get him another quick finish, and then maybe just give one fight to Jose Medina to be like, all right, are we done? Can we can we can we get back to reality here? That this guy's not a UFC fighter. I, I mean, I would take Reese round one is probably the only way you can really realistic play it or put it in a parlay. But I have no fear about. Zach Reese losing mm-hmm. to Medina. I just, I don't see it. I think Medina is absolutely awful. So I think a tired Zach Reese is probably better than, than, than Jose Medina, <laughs> uh, you know, after a round of, because, because, okay, let's say they do, let's say Medina does survive the first round. He will have gotten absolutely obliterated. Yes. If he's, like, yeah. he's going to absorb so much damage. I'm not sure he's going to have that much left to take. Oh, well. All right. Let's move on to uh, Borshev and Lantop. Um, we're pretty familiar with both these guys. Uh, what's your take? I got to worry about Slava in this fight. Slava should win this fight. I'll start with that. Slava should win this fight. If they fight nine times out of 10, just looking at skill set, he wins nine times out of 10. But when I worry about Slava, long kickboxing career, lots of wear and tear. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, that is a lot of wear and tear on your chin. That is a lot of shots. And look, I know his chin failed against Chase Hooper, but Chase Hooper, you guys all have to admit it, whether you like Chase Hooper or not, Chase Hooper looked better in that fight. Way better from a stand-up perspective. Power, that's a, that's a guy type. that's benefited from the weight, uh, the weight, yes. weight change. Going up, going yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and getting older. <laughs> As well, he's a baby, you well, know. So, you know, he's fighting like a man now. So it's kind of a tough little read here on Slava. I think skill set wise, Slava should be able to work this all day long. Um, not impressed with Lontop, stand up striker. I don't see the ground game that's gonna give Slava trouble at all. And that's kind of the ground game. And honestly, I would venture to say that Slava might even be a better wrestler. We've seen Slava working on his wrestling, so this could be a good bounce back spot for Slava to win. Uh, I love the fact that Borshev goes to the body every single fight and you can count on it. The one thing we look for in a fighter is that you can count on what their game plan is going to be. If you can count on their game plan and count on their coaching, you know Slava's going to throw a couple wicked body shots. And I think that's going to take some steam at a lawn top, which is going to make the takedown even worse. So I'm picking Slava in this. I have not bet this yet. I'm worried about the chin a little bit, but if he can survive getting that first clip, we've just seen this recently with these new gloves. You have a chance to get a knockout. Somebody gets hurt, somebody gets hit, and then you have to capitalize on that because I don't know if it's the new gloves or what, but it's like the knockout and you instantly know the fight's going the distance if the fight doesn't end on that one beautiful shot that lands. So we saw it with leg kicks over the weekend with Ramos. Like, oh, it's got to go under. It, easy distance in that point. Um, it just happens over and over again. So I think if Slava can survive that first tough shot, he probably runs away with this on either points or a late finish. I I can't remember a, a guy. I, Lontop is 14-3 and three right now. I can't remember a guy that's 14-2 and two that it was more excited to bet against. I, I, mm-hmm. I, think, I think Lontop's in over his head here um, in the UFC. We... He won on Contender Series. Congratulations. And I couldn't wait to bet against him, um, against Chris Padilla. And he, he gets choked out by Chris Padilla. I, like, Chris Padilla is not. Easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. like, so, like, he chokes out, you know, Lontop, and he has another uh, rear naked. But most of his, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. most of his wins are knockouts. This is not, like, the most amazing submission guy ever. Um so Lontop has absolutely no ground game. And 
like it's been noted before, that's who gives Borshev all the problems. Mike Davis takes him down a million times. Mark, Mark D. Casey takes him down a million times. Chase Super, we know that. But when you stand and try and strike with him, he's going well. yep. to give you real problems. <laughs> so um, I don't trust the fight IQ of James Lontop. You get submitted. Like, you get taken down, get up, taken down, get up, taken down, and then submitted in one round by Chris Padilla. I'm so out. I don't mm-hmm. trust him with this fight IQ at all. He, he in, Even in contender series, he just didn't really look like, you know, he had a plan. Um, I, I, I think Borshev puts a veteran performance on him. Now, this may not be the fight to fade Borshev, but man. He's, he's it's coming. Yeah, how old is he? I mean, he's eh, 32. <laughs> he's creeping up there. Um, and yeah, the durability is going to get there, but I just don't think Lontop's the guy to sneaky, sneaky angle on this. Uh, we said this the other week about a fighter. If there's anybody that Slava's going to submit, it could very well be Lontop. I could see it. I could see a, him get sparked and Slava jumps on his back out of nowhere, nope. or they get in close to the clinch and he, and Slava really realizes how bad Lontop's takedown Defense mm-hmm. truly is he could go for it, or you know, Borsh, Borsh, any of he's a striking coach, or he may just I I could see like right off the bat he's like this this kid does not have the striking yeah. defense. I can work the body and work the head, um, you know, all night long. So pick is Borshev for me. Um, it's pretty juicy. So you know, I I I wouldn't get too cute and try and pick a a, a prop, but if you are going to it. I think it's Borshev by KO, but I would look mm-hmm. for ways to try and exploit the money line on Borshev as I, I just, I'm not high on line top at all. So, uh, Dennis Mazukia is now fighting Francis Marshall. Um, just real quick. Do you have any thoughts on this one? Cause I haven't seen lines for mm-hmm. it, nor do I care to bet on these. No, two this fight is absolutely hideous. This is two fighters that I don't care to watch. Francis Marshall was a big talk to big game coming in. Everybody was high on him, And I was, Count yeah, me we well. all were. We all were. Um, yeah. William Gomes is better than we thought he is, and Isaac Dolgarian is a very good fighter. So he did lose to two good fighters. Uh, i just never been a Bazookia fan. I think he's here because of his connections. I, I You know, beating Connor Matthews as well, it was like, oh, Connor Matthews isn't that great either. You know, uh, another fraudulent record <laughs> as well. So you got two fraudulent records. Every time they step up in competition, they look like garbage. Um, yeah, just I'm staying away from it. Late, le- One thing to say is late notice replacement fights recently have been going the distance. So oh, that's a may- great maybe way to a total look at there. It. Yeah. yeah. These late replacements, paycheck grabs. It's like both guys appreciate that the other one's doing them a favor and it turns into a 15 minute sparring session. So I, I would not be surprised. Maybe the late notice will help Francis Marshall because uh, his game plan was terrible against Gomez. He, he would look so nervous until he fi- mm. until the third round when he finally opened it up, but it was too late. And then Dogarian, he just l- was lost from the very beginning, like not like non-competitive. Mm. Um, so I don't know. It, 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 this is a great bounce back opportunity because Denny, Dennis Mizuki, he absorbed a ton of damage against Sean Woodson. Sean Woodson really kicked his ass, and then, John, mm-hmm. you know, Jamal Emmers gets finished, and, yeah, Connor Matthew, Matthews uh, does a little bit. But, yeah, it's probably a stay away. So, uh, Real quick, guys, just want to uh, highlight, tell you guys about some of the things we've been up to, 2,024 totals for our official plays. We always like to be transparent about our record, and uh, this year has been great. Uh, 396 wins, 257 Losses for plus 125.8 units, 8.4% ROI. Super, super proud of that. And if you could, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you haven't joined the Discord, uh, sign up. we got a lot of free plays in there, a lot of great discussion. Uh, it's very positive. It's a great group of, of guys. Uh, no nonsense, none of the craziness that you've seen in other Discord channels. So uh, go ahead and take advantage of that. And uh, this week's specials, we got our PFL best bet that is up. And we've got 4% soccer best bets that are up number one at Wager Talk in soccer since we joined. Since we started putting up soccer plays, number one. Nobody's won more Beautiful. units. So really, really happy about that. Uh, let's jump up to Edmund Spazian and Gerald Mearshart. Uh, this is an interesting matchmaking. I bet they had fun when they decided on this one. Uh, what do you got on this? I'm very upset that I'm not going to be able to watch these fights live because that is the only way that I'm betting this fight. 
Okay. This is the live bet spot of the card right here. If you see Gerald Mearshart get clipped by Shabazian and get through it and get to the second round, you're betting Gerald Mearshart. Because <laughs> it's Edmund will tire. If this goes to the ground, Gerald Mearshart, Mearshart is going to work Shabazian. If it does not go to the ground, Shabazian should put Gerald Mearshart into orbit. So with this fight, I think a safe play, since I can't watch it live, I'm going to be interested in the total in the fight not to go the distance. I know you guys want to hear money lines, but I'd rather give you what I feel better at. Um, I would, I, I think this fight doesn't go. Uh, we know GM three's chin is suspect and Edmund hits hard. Uh, we know that Edmund's cardio is horrible and his ground game is slightly improved, but not near the level of mere shards, not even in the same planet as mere shards. So, I think somebody gets finished in this fight. I'm interested in the Lions. When they come out, that's where I'll be looking to bet this. Money line-wise, watch the first round. You see Edmonds cardio going, or you see him land that shot and not be able to get the finish, and that's what you're looking for. Then you're jumping on Mearshart. Yeah, that's, that's the only way to play this fight, really. So if you're betting Edmund, you might as well just bet him in round one because he's mm. going to get tired. Uh, we know that. and um, Yeah, <laughs> if you're going to bet Mearshart, don't bet him before the fight. Just wait till live mm -hmm. lines because if he survives the first, he's going to be a massive plus number. Yes. Like, like I mean, you, seriously, you you, you, can, you might be able to get him at like 10 to 1. You're, you're going to have to bet it with two to one minute left in the first round. <laughs> and with him it, getting – getting Yes. <laughs> if, if the round ends, you're going to see a flood of money come in on your, your shot. <laughs> oh, that's a great fight. point. Everyone's going to yeah, know you, this. You can't wait to in between rounds, I, unfortunately. Yeah. Michael Morales, Neil Magny. I mean, Neil Magny is basically the perfect example of a gatekeeper right mm -hmm. now in UFC. It's like, hey, he's limited, can't get to the top with a championship, but everyone that is in that division has got to go through Neil Magny, and now it's Michael Morales' time. Uh, the line is laughable at this point. I mean, we're, we're, we're creeping up at minus 900. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. I mean, this was Jack Jenkins versus Herbert Burns, you know, yep. type, type of a line. So I like Morales to win, but. I mean, talk about talk about nothing you can do with it. Even Michael Morales to win by decision is probably going to be like laughable. Um, mm. What do you think about this fight? I love the opening line. I thought there was a ton of value. Uh, it's gone now. I still love Michael Morales to absolutely work Neil Magny. What worries do you have about Morales? Cardio? No. Striking? No. Wrestling? No. Fight IQ? No. He checks every box to beat a guy like Neil Magny and Neil should literally change his name to you shall not pass Magny. He is like Gandalf sitting on the bridge, turning away all contenders. But this is a guy who's gotten better and better and better. And what I love about Morales is he has won every possible way that you can win an MMA fight. He's done the unanimous decision. He's done the split decision. He's done the submission. He's done the knockout. He's well-rounded. Uh, Neil Magny can win fights if you tire and he can get you in the clinch and make it ugly. And I don't think he's going to be able to do this against Morales. I'll be really interested in the submission numbers because Neil Magny loses by submission when he gets finished. We saw it with Shavkat. You know, there's been multiple times where people, you saw Ian Gary when he finally tried to finish the fight, how easily he moved into a dominant position on the ground. And Morales' grappling is very good. So I could see him getting to the back of Magny and sinking in a choke at some point. Um, you're going to have to get creative if you want to bet this fight. The money line is just outrageous. Yeah, the only thing with Morales is just the last couple fights, Jake Matthews and Max Griffin, it feel like that. I don't want to call them sparring sessions, but it felt like he was like working on things. And we, we've seen him get better mm -hmm. and better in each fight. And yeah, it, you know, we see with these guys, it's important for them to get as much cage time against good quality opponents as possible. Um, I don't know. I like, I don't know. I, can you finish Jake Matthews? Um, I mean, I, I think both these guys are tough, but I just, I, I felt myself wanting just a little bit more, a little bit more of the killer mentality. That mm -hmm. being said, how can you knock it when the guy's 16 and Oh, his fights are not boring. No. Um, you know, he does a pretty decent job of uh, really, really keeping active. So um, 
And, you know, to be honest, Neil Magny was really getting beat up by Mike Mott for Mike Lott's cardio just, like, literally fell off a cliff in the last two minutes. It was really insane um, how that happened. So it really should be – I mean, if Balot survives, I mean, you're looking at, you know, a, a Neil Magny who's, who lost to Mike Malott, Ian Gary, Gilbert Burns, and had a, the tightest split decision against Ooh. Phil Rowe in one of the worst fights, you know, we've, we've ever watched. So, um, yeah, I – I don't know. Magny's still got some some gas in the tank, but you're right. The pick is paralysis. Just there's nothing you can do betting wise, and that's kind of a little bit of a theme on this card. <laughs> uh, the Ultimate Fighter. Do you think uh, UFC's second guessing? Not in second guessing. You think you're going to move forward with the Ultimate Fighter? This was the season was so bad that I didn't even know these guys were fighting until until I was I was like Ryan Loader and Robert yeah. Allen. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the Ultimate Fighter guys. Now, and I, I am an avid fan of of the Ultimate Fighter. I watch every episode. This season, it was fast forward get to the fights, um, and I get the feeling that most people were not even watching the fights. I get the feeling that most people are just going through. So, I don't know what the future is of of the Ultimate Fighter, but this season was a real step backwards. Like you had multiple people on the show, including the two coaches that were kind of hard to understand yeah. when they were talking. Um, and so it just wasn't captivating or anything. That being said, I like this fight. I think this fight's mm-hmm. going to be low key, pretty, uh, pretty entertaining. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Valentin's the, uh, the, uh, the favorite in this one. Uh, it's, you know, loaders wrestler Valentin's a little bit more of a striker. Do you have any opinions on this one? Ryan is just a wrestler. His stand up is horrible. Um, he's slow. He doesn't have high volume. This is polar opposites fighting each other, essentially. So um, I lean towards Robert because what I did see on the Ultimate Fighter is this guy has a very good fight IQ. So much so to the point where they had him cornering fighters throughout the season. So if your coaches, if you're sitting there, you know, next to uh, Grasso and, uh, Who's our uh, submission guy? Chef Jago. Oh, no, that, Diego uh, Lopez. Diego Lopez. And they trust you enough to corner fighters. That means you have a good IQ. Ryan does come from a good camp. He's a great wrestler. He's a great wrestler. Uh, but that doesn't really translate in the UFC anymore, in case you haven't noticed. So, I mean, Robert could land one big shot around and steal some rounds here. Uh, if you're asking me who's going to look more lumped up at the end of the fight, it's going to be Ryan. So I think you got to lean that way in today's MMA. But, yeah, I won't be betting on the Ultimate Fighter finale. As far as the show going forward, I think they got to get the right people in there. they got to get the right fighters in there. This was not a very well-thought-out season to put the two of them together. Yeah, it was bad. To say the least. And the problem is, how do you convince fighters to take time out of their life and go do this? You know, it's been tough. Money. Except we've um, seen the UFC does not like paying their fighters. It's like yes. it's like Dana's least favorite thing ever, uh-huh. paying people. Uh, it's, just, it's more of an annoyance now. Um, yes. uh, so I, I watched this. Uh, here's my caution with Robert Valentin. Both of his fights combined, I believe, were less than a minute. One guy he knocked out like less than 10 seconds in. And then the another guy, he got this very strange submission where the – I mean, he, he's – he like kind of fell on him and it was an, it was a nice submission, but we've certainly never seen anything like it before. Uh, I think it just spoke to how bad the level of competition was. So Ryan Loader uh, had a quick finish and then he had a fight that went, you know, pretty long. So I don't worry. That's the thing is, I guess what I'm saying is I don't worry about Loader's cardio. I've watched his cardio. Mm-hmm. His cardio's fine. Robert, I haven't really seen it fought. I mean, they obviously both have fought some pretty weak competition coming into it. So it's a stay away from me, but I don't know. I, I, I think Ryan, if Ryan survives the early uh, onslaught of Valentin, I think he wrestles and pulls away because he's he can wrestle all night long, and mm-hmm. I think he can hold Robert down, tire him out, and uh, probably land some damage. Again, I'm not betting it, so that's kind of a yeah, kind, of a, kind mm-hmm. of a theme here. So, Angela Hill, Tabitha Ricci, odds are about even here. Uh, what do you think, Baby Shark, and the veteran Angela Hill? Who you got? I'll be quick with this. Uh, I wanted to bet Angela Hill to start. Totally changed my tune. Went back and looked, watched the fight that Angela had last. Everyone's like, oh, submission. She's great. Look, she had an opponent that quit. 
When Angela Hill doesn't have an p- opponent that quits and it goes to decision, it's razor close. Nine times out of ten. <laughs> yeah. With this age and everything, Tabitha Ricci's ground game is going to be a real problem for Angela Hill if it gets there. So I am very interested in Ricci now. I know the line has moved. We missed the good line. You can't base all your bets off line movement. Uh, I love the plus three and a half on Ricci. I know – these judges have really kind of hurt these three and a halves, but if there's one that I really like, I think that's a great parlay piece. I just don't see it being 30, 27 either way. Even if Ricci wins, just it's an Angela Hill fight. Uh, Ricci very well has the submission upside. I think very much. He could get a submission on Angela Hill, notoriously hard to finish, but that age is getting up there. Durability becomes in question. I've seen Angela wobbled in most of her fights. She fights through it. And I just think the forward pressure of Ricci could be a real problem. I love uh, Tabitha Ricci in this one. Uh, I'm happy to fade Angela Hill here, who's almost 40. Um, yeah, I went back and watched her last two fights. Denise Gomes was terrible on the on the ground. Angela Hill was able to take advantage of that. She will not be able to do that to Tabitha Ricci. Like you said, Juan Pinheiro legit quit mm-hmm. in the second round. Bad attitude. J- just was like not into the fight at all and oh by the way cut Angela Hill like yep. Angela Hill was bleeding um again Tabitha Ricci you're not gonna be able to to do that Tabitha Ricci ain't gonna quit uh, um uh, on, on you and look look at who she's lost to in the USA Firo <laughs> you know in a standing match and then a split decision where if one judge changes one round she wins she wins against Lupi um thought her fight against Tisha Pennington was great I was big on Ricci on that fight we had, this was a fade the baby theory, mm-hmm. and it cashed. But man, credit to Tisha Pennington, who looked fantastic, and what a great test uh, for Ricci to pass because Pennington showed good cardio, showed good, I mean, good clinch, uh, good striking. It was really, really close, and that was a dig deep, and you know, it was a real test for Ricci that she passed. And uh, I just Angela Hill, almost forty. I just don't think Angela Hill is going to be able to do to Tabitha Ricci what she was able to do um, to the last two. So I have Tabitha Ricci, and uh, I'm pretty confident in it. I really like mm-hmm. the line that it's somewhat close to even. So give me Ricci uh, for sure in that matchup. Jared Cannonier and our boy Kyle Barallo in the main event. I don't think a, I don't think there's a fighter that I've made more money off of than Kyle Barallo. Uh, this has been a just a I mean, just I get worked up thinking about him. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what are we doing? Jared Cannonier and Kyle Barallo. We keep riding the Barallo train or does it get a, does Cannonier put on a veteran performance? Well, this veteran performance is going to have to be 40 plus years old and post knee surgery. <laughs> that is not a good recipe. Could Jared Cannonier clip him? Yes. Is he the toughest test for Kyle? Yes. But we're talking about the mastermind of the fighting nerds who are on an absolute tear. You're going to hear it all week on every single breakdown. I'll say it too. I think the guy's IQ is great. I also don't think he's going to buy into this. I'm not allowed to wrestle any more stuff. He wants a win. Let's not forget. This was Kyle Barallo's call out. Haven't heard anybody say that yet. If you got to trust anybody in the UFC to make a call out and know something going into a fight, it is Kyle Barallo. That's a great point. I didn't even I didn't even think about that. You're he, right. After his last fight, Jared Cannonier, you're a scary man. Let's see who the scariest person in the world is, me or you. That's Call a great out. point. Kyle yeah. Barallo's, like, he picks his guys for a reason. This ain't like where everyone was calling mm-hmm. out Derek Brunson uh, yeah. for, <laughs> for a while. Like, this was a very cold and calculated call out, for sure. Yeah, it, it's Kyle for me. No opinion on a total. Don't think you need to. Uh, it could go to the decision. It could be Kyle by submission. I just, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm good with just Kyle. Money line. That's it. Yeah, you know this. To me, this falls into the camp of um, we just, we. J- I just have kept riding Barallo. and when you have your read, when you have a great read on a fighter, mm-hmm. you just keep riding. I, I really, really believe it. I mean. He, I've been betting on this guy literally since he was on Contender Series. I follow this win against Aaron Jeffrey. He came in way too cocky. He was young. He beats Aaron Jeffrey, but it was boring. Mm-hmm. And it was it was boring yeah, it even was boring. for 2021 yeah. standards. Dana mm-hmm. said, no, no contract. So what do they do? They bring him back. 
<laughs> two weeks later, and he just pounds Jesse Murray. And then we just see him figure out ways how to win. And then, you know, this fighting nerds thing comes around, and now the guy's a real force. And he said he told Daniel Cormier in the ring, I think I have the best two-leg takedown. He may. He may. Mm -hmm. um, so when I look at Jared Cannonier, I mean, yeah, 40 years old and the big weights, you know, the, the knee issue. He gets, you know, he's it's a good fight against Imavov, but – he got blasted in the fourth round. I know oh, early stoppage. He was uh, okay. He wasn't surviving what Imavov no. was putting him on him. He was getting ready to go down. So you go back. He beats Vittori in one of the weirdest Vittori, which, by the way, there's a guy that might be done. Uh, Mar Marvin Vittori. Um, split decision against Sean Strickland, who took that on, like, what, a few days? Uh -huh. <laughs> Notice and barely yep. beat him. Loses to Adesanya. Okay, whatever. Knocks out Derek Brunson. Okay, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Gaslam Whitaker. Yeah. Um, I, I guess my point is he, okay, knocks out Derek Brunson, who everybody was, but you got to go back to 2019 to find when he was knocking guys out. Mm -hmm. That was when he was in his, you know, early, you know, mid 30s. I just haven't seen the knockout power, and I think that's what it's going to take against Brawlow. We've seen Brawlow striking get immensely better. Over the last, you know, few fights, it's, you know, is he going to be win a boxing tournament? You know, no, probably not. But it's gotten better to where you have to respect it a little bit. I don't think Cannonier has got the power uh, to put anything on Barallo. Barallo is a big, tough guy. Um, here's the other, here's the other kind of interesting thing about uh, Cannonier. I don't think he's fought anybody like Barallo. In a long time. Imavov doesn't do what Barallo does. That's a very good point. Vittori's kind of a brawler clinch on the feet, but he's not go to the ground. He doesn't have to take downs. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, Strickland's not taking anybody down. Adesanya, no. Brunson. Mm -hmm. uh, Gastelum. Whitaker. Jack Hermanson. Anderson Silva. Hermanson's David the, the last one that would mix the takedowns in, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I... I Here's what I did. I went back and looked at Glover Teixeira, and I'm like, okay, there's a guy, there's a guy that fights maybe similar to Brawl, where he takes guys down. So I went back and watched. Uh, Glover Teixeira took Jared Cannonier down about as easy as you could possibly mm -hmm. take it, laid on him and beat him up for three rounds. Yeah. Like not competitive on the ground. Now, that was a long time ago. Is Cannonier allowed to get better? Of course. He's also older. Um, I just, I just, um, he had 10 minutes, 38 seconds of control time. Uh, I just don't really see it. And here's the other thing. I went back and counted it up. Jerry Cannonier has been taken down 24 times in the UFC, 61% takedown defense against this level of competition. That's a problem. Yeah. Against that, this, this is level? why you can't always trust numbers. Yeah. Like 61% mm -hmm. against who Dominic Reyes and David branch and Jack Herman said and Robert like like he you can take him down I I know he's tough and oh he's got good get up game Barallo's not good luck getting up against Barallo yeah if Barallo takes you down and gets a body triangle that's it anymore. that's You're it not. for the round so mm -hmm. um yeah I, I I'm in on Barallo I know he's gonna lose at some point I'm just not sure that 40 year old Jerry Cannon here off a of knee surgery who sneakily has been taken down quite a bit in his career. I just don't think Cannoneer's uh, the one to do it. Um, Cause you know, you say, oh, well, you know, flash knockout, new gloves. No, <laughs> like we haven't yeah. seen a, a whole lot of those. So I'm, I'm with you that I, I think it's Barallo and I will just keep riding the Barallo train. Um, I'll have to figure out when is the time to get, to get off the, the Kyle Barallo train, but I haven't seen any reason um, to get off. All depends on the matchup. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> This is kind of interesting to try and pick a parley buster on this card. Okay. Um, so needs to be somebody that everyone's going to put in their parlays. Um, I mean, is it Kong Wang? Is it Zach Reese? Who do you think everyone's going to put in their parlays that has the chance of derailing everyone? Mm, put in their parlays. I don't see a lot. I really don't. Uh, it's tough because the one that I would want to pick is the one that I think is going to win as well. Like I know, <laughs> you know. So I mean, look, if I have to pick somebody that could drop the ball, oh, uh, Cavalcanti. 
I think people are excited to fade Josie and Nunez, mm-hmm. and I think it might be a mistake. If this things get to minus 200, yeah, I would say that one. I, I, I lean that one as well because uh, I do think people are – I do think people are going to remember what happened mm. to Nunez in her last one, and they're going to remember Cavalcanti coming off of a win. So I was going to say Neil Magny and Michael Morales just because Magny, but I, I, I can't get it. there. I don't get there. Uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda. This is, uh, our, this is where we pick a play where at the end of the night we're just like, man, why didn't we play that one? Mine was terrible. Um, uh, when I picked Steve Ursag as <laughs> the woulda, coulda, shoulda, that was just like the worst one of all time. Um, <laughs> I forget what's your... what mine even was. Yeah, um, yeah. What's your woulda, coulda, shoulda? I'll do mine. Mine's, Good. mine's Tabitha Ricci. I knew you were going there. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I think at the end we're going to look at Angela Hill just finishing oh. the, the – uh, here's my prediction – we're going to look at Angela Hill laying on her back at the end of round three, like doing the thing with her arms behind her head and her feet kind of crossed. Like, wow, that was a rough three rounds. And uh, Tabitha Rishi, it turns out, is not Denise Gomes or uh, or uh, Luana Pinheiro. So I got Rishi to continue the winning streak. I'm all in on, uh, on on Baby Shark. And I think at the end of the, at the, end of the night, this line is going to look like a steal. Okay. I'm going to go with Slava by knockout. There you go. Proud of you, Jim. I think we'll look at that and say, man, we were just wasn't the guy. (laughs) Ron Top's not the guy, you know? (laughs) He was was going to be my Slava by finish. He beats him up to the body and then ends him inside three. Yeah, I I, I haven't put in a bet yet on Borshev, Mm -hmm. but I mean – I, I got to tell you, if we put our two woulda, coulda, shouldas, we're getting, we're, we will get a very nice uh, price just because of how close the line is. Uh, we'll, I'm, I'm, I, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll research it, but I think you could do worse than a. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a plus two hundred, you know, yeah. parlay on Tabitha and Borsche. So, uh, anyways, guys, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to hit the like button. Check out all of our other videos on the Winning in the Shadows uh, YouTube page. We've got tons of NFL futures. We're gearing up for that and uh, follow all of our sports as well. EPL season just started, so Corbin is going to start knocking out a bunch of content, free plays in there. If you haven't joined the Discord channel, uh, please do that as well. Leave us a comment. Tell us who you like on this card. Good luck on your plays. Let's practice really, really good bankroll management. We are we have won eight weeks in a row all sports. This mm-hmm. is not sustainable, so we keep lowering the volume on the amount of plays that we do because we really, really want to keep this winning streak going. But more importantly, it is about long-term results, and you got to manage your losses because uh, we know it's inevitable uh, that you're going to have a losing week. So when we do have a losing week, make sure we're practicing good bankroll management because we want to see you guys build that bankroll uh, through the ups and the downs. Good luck on your place. We'll see you ever next time. See you next time.